spent my last 70 years here in East Falmouth and uh, probably remember coming down here to the Kunameset River in the bogs, probably at five, six years old. So as a child, of course, the big thing for this area was the herring in the spring. It's hard to think of how prolific the fish were. You couldn't see the bottom of the, the catch basin over there. Um, the runs would be, just be so thick. I mean, literally, you would not see the bottom of the river over there. There used to be a million herring in the Kunameset River. A million herring in 1927. And now there's less than 30,000. I realize now at that time, if you told me that those fish are going to become almost extinct, I'd say, are you crazy? <laughs> are you kidding? So what happened to the, this fish run through, through the centuries? From the 1700s on, it was dammed up as an industrial river, uh, first for grist mills, later on, the site of where we are right now was a woolen mill. And so these are blockages for the river after the mill industry moved elsewhere for various reasons. This area in the late 1800s was turned into cranberry bogs. And one of the things about growing cranberries that was discovered here on the Cape is that cranberries grow better when you keep sanding the bog platforms so the plants themselves aren't buried into the water, they're above the water. Sand moves into the river bottom, makes the river bottom wide and sandy. And from the point of view of a fish trying to get up river, you're easily spotted by predators from above. It also makes it shallow with no shade on the side, and it increases the temperature of the river. There was concern in the, in the late uh, 1990s and, and first decade of the 2000s with the decline in the number of herring. And a, a group was formed, the Kunameset River Trust, who were concerned with trying to restore the, this, this as an active fish run. The Kunameset River Restoration Project is unique in the state of Massachusetts. It has brought together many different organizations with a variety of interests but all focused on returning um, health to the Kunameset River. My vision and the CRT's vision uh, are to create a river that's very well connected to its surrounding lands. Uh, those lands have been in cranberry farming for more than a hundred years. DER's goals for the project are to restore the natural river and floodplain processes along the Kunameset River. It is expected to increase the numbers of river herring that return here every spring. But it's also not just about the herring, it's also about the American eel that live in this system, the eastern brook trout in the headwaters that we hope to see expand to the lower river, and then the food web that uh, relies on all of those species. Where we're standing right here is kind of on this bridge between the freshwater system of the Kunameset River and then the marine and ocean environment um, downstream from us. And the river herring are the vital link between those two systems. So they, they grow up um, out in the ocean and then they come swimming up the rivers and um, give birth to their young in the freshwater. And so both food webs rely on those river herring, the ocean food web and the freshwater aquatic food web. And so the Kunameset River project, by removing the various blockages in the system, will essentially open up that link between the ocean and the freshwater. When the river is restored, we'll see all aspects of the food web restored. So we'll see the insects that live in the bottom of the stream, the fish that rely on those insects, and the wildlife that then rely on those fish. We have this marvelous opportunity now to restore natural vegetation, create natural diverse wetlands along the river to plant trees and establish cover, and also to improve the habitat within the river itself, put in more woody debris, things that used to be part of natural river systems but haven't been in this river system for a very long time. Once construction begins, the changes that first occur are going to look really messy, but this is necessary to strip away the sand, to reorient the river, and to allow uh, natural restoration, natural, the natural seed bank that, that is underneath the sand to come back. In the first month 
of restoration, there'll be a lot of big machines on the, on the platform. Much of the vegetation that's there will come away, but if people are just a little bit patient, what they'll find is in the springtime, that seed bed will flourish, and very soon next spring, we'll have uh, an, an initial vibrant wetland, but as years go on, the wetland, more and more wetland plants will develop in this community. Obviously, one of the goals of this project is to restore the natural functions of the river, to bring back the fish populations. But equally important to that is the human aspect. And all along, we've tried to keep both goals in mind. One example of a project that does both is the fish tagging effort that the Kunameset River Trust has done. This tagging program gives us important information about the movements of fish, how long it takes to get up the river, where they get blocked, and where we therefore need to target our restoration efforts. The tagging also serves as a way to reach the public, so we can we let them adopt a fish. Um, that's part of, part of what's really cool about it, is a lot of kids in town get to adopt their own herring. People donate money to pay for the tags and the tagging program, and the kids get to adopt a fish. And the Mullen Hall fourth graders for their graduation field trip are going to come to the river, and again, uh, they'll get to see the restoration and, and um, their adopted fish, what they've had to go through in order to get up to the pond. This has always been an important recreational area. We want to continue to have areas along the river that can be accessed by all ages and all abilities. About 10 years ago, Beth Schwartzman of the 300 Committee convinced them how important it was to sort of complete the conservation buffer along the river. And in fact, it's almost complete. And so from the Kunameset Pond down here to the lower bog, there's a trail that goes entirely through conservation land, either owned by the town or owned by the 300 committee. And along that trail, what we want to have are stations. And at those stations, we'll have a kiosk. And one side of the kiosk will have an interpretive sign that tells a cultural story. And the other side will tell a natural history story, stories that various people know, but they only know little, little bits of it. And it's an opportunity to put it all together. So one of the things that the 300 Committee is working on right now with the town is the Kunameset Greenway Gateway Park. It will essentially be an amphitheater. It's a gathering space, a major trailhead. So we could have um, you know, kids from the various schools or scout troops or families to come and it will provide a space for them to gather. I think it's a, just a testament to the people in Falmouth, the people in this community, um, the scientists working with Volunteer Land Trust and the town. When a group of people come together with a vision and determination and collaboration that they can achieve something fantastic. So I'm excited to see it come to fruition and to be able to come back here with my family and with my son, you know, so that he can walk across these walkways and just sort of take it all in. There's nothing like being out in nature, being by the side of a river to, to really sort of bring you back to how important this is. But I think we're going to make a marked improvement on what we have today. And that's, that's my goal. And I think I can see it coming.